the winner of Next Level Chef, Stephanie Payet. Payet, Payet. Yes. Okay. <laughs> hey, welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Congratulations on winning. This is, I think everybody in India because you're excited. You are, we're our number one story yesterday. <laughs> so exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, my pleasure. Listen, now uh, you, you won what a quarter million dollars and you have some one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what, what this prize means and what you're going to do with the money. Um, for me, it's uh, obviously a huge accomplishment. I mean, it's more money than I've ever had, you know, and to be able to do that with, you know, the sweat of my brow um, physically, <laughs> and it's, it means a lot. And my plans are to really start. I feel like now it's like it's not really a big break. It's, you know, it's not about the big break. It's about the work that comes next. And so I plan on spending a lot of time on um, my reservation in Prairie Bend, Potawatomi and Mayetta, Kansas, and, re you know, reconnecting with the community and doing a lot of community work and just really um, reconnecting and having those conversations about, you know, like what food representation means to indigenous people. And I think a lot of indigenous people are not sure what, you know, indigenous food is to our people and what our, we don't really know what our ancestors ate. And I think there's now this new movement with myself and other chefs to really, you know, kind of relearn that and further educate others about it as well. And so my plan now is to just continue to do that and continue on this journey of highlighting indigenous culture through food and highlighting indigenous people with representation in the industry of the food industry. So that's my goal. Um, I'm hoping to be able to visit other reservations, you know, when it's safe, COVID safe, and just continue to you know, brought in my knowledge about different cultures, different, uh, different tribes, different um, uses of, you know, the ingredients and learning a lot about food sovereignty. And so that's what my next plan is, is just to really just reconnect and, and learn and then use all of that knowledge and just put it into my food and be able to share that with everybody. That's wonderful. And I understand you were on the Prairie Band Reservation in Mayetta last week at the Boys and Girls Club. What was your message to the youth? What 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 do you try to really inspire them to do or talk to us about? That? Well, when I was there, um, the Boys and Girls Club consists of children from K through five, so they're at a pretty young age. So it's hard to you know be able to say something inspiring to young kids. <laughs> okay, I think, I think they're just happy to see someone that they saw on TV, and so. While I was there with them, I did a, you know, a quick cooking demo on, you know, my wajapi sauce. And so I made it in front of them and I told them, you know, that berries are indigenous to the United States. And I don't know if that they quite, you know, register what everything means quite yet. But I think it was probably really cool for them to see someone that is also Prairie Band on TV. And so my, my biggest message to them was basically that, you know, I'm one of you and I come from the same places that you do. And if you want to be on TV one day or you want to do something like really big with your future and, and dream big, then I encourage them to absolutely do that. And so it was just really awesome to be able to see their bright little faces. And they were so excited to see me and they were they knew all about the show. They followed along and. It was really neat to see how invested they were into my journey, just, you know, just even as little kids. And so I felt so honored to be able to go and, and do a cooking demo with them and have them eat some of my food and try it and answer their questions. So it was really cute. Well, I, I, I happen to be a fellow citizen of Prairie Band Nation. So this big kid, I, I'm proud of you, too. So I'm excited uh, for you. And it is so nice to see that representation on television. Hey, speak to those who may not really understand what food sovereignty means from the indigenous point of view. For me, it's basically, you know, like we as indigenous people or people that have lived on that do live on reservations, there's kind of that. Sometimes in some areas, it's lack of um, resources to be able to to cook your own food and cook healthy food and cook food that are, you know, originated from your people or from this land instead of it being so processed or, you know, not having the resources to be able to do those things. And so food sovereignty is super important to indigenous people because it gives us the ability to then, you know, kind of create our own dishes, create our own story with food instead of having all of these processed foods that don't really belong to us and foods that 
came later on in, in our story as, you know, as a species, as people, as a, as a race. And so I think it's super important for us to be able to regain that strength and have that voice again and saying, this is our food and we're representing ourselves through these dishes. And, you know, just like any other culture around the world, food brings people together in community just as much as every other culture it does the same for us. And fortunately, we're in this era where we can actually put, you know, our indigenous food on the on the on the plate and on the table and say, like, this is what our ancestors have made. And I think some people didn't know, you know, a lot of people don't know what is indigenous food, what does Native American food look like? Mm -hmm. So now we have the the resources like social media, we have the resources of different organizations that are helping these um communities with food sovereignty and we can now share that with the public we can share that amongst ourselves amongst native people and it's just so extremely important and i don't think people realize how important identity through food is because it is something that brings cultures together and you can learn so much about you know about traditions and about culture and origins of you know regions of where food comes from you learn so much just from one one plate of food and so i just think it's super important that we all acknowledge, you know, the importance of food sovereignty, the importance of identity through food, and also just, you know, learn as much as we possibly can and then pass that on to the future generations. Yeah, and I, I'm excited that you won, won, I'm excited you won, but it happened, to, it happened during March, and March is, is uh, National Nutrition Month, and so what you just said, probably it is just so important, it's critical. Uh, and, and, and you mentioned the processed foods. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this. Before the colon, colonizers came, we didn't have diabetes. Mm -mm. We did not have some of these diseases that that really have, have stricken our community. So I, I really appreciate that message. And, and I think as you go forward, you, you're going to become a very great advocate for uh, Indian country. So excited, very excited for you. T tell us, how did you even get on this show? You know, it kind of just serendipitously happened. I wasn't, I had no, you know, knowledge of the show. I was actually contacted by another casting um, crew member that I did an interview for earlier. Well, I think it was actually the year before they wanted to cast me for another Gordon Ramsay show called Hell's Kitchen. And I said, no, I don't think that's for me. You know, I that's don't intense. <laughs> it's a little too intense for me. And I was like, I don't think my skill set is, you know, is up there with the rest of them. And I was like, I don't think I want to work in a Gordon Ramsay restaurant because that's what ultimately they're they're competing for. And I was like, I don't know that that's what I want to do. And so I ended up passing up the opportunity just because, you know, maybe it was fear. Maybe it was just not feeling like it was the right fit. And so maybe it was a gut instinct, you know, that it wasn't time. And so I just, I passed it up. And then that same casting uh, member forwarded my information over to the new casting um, company and said, hey, we have this girl, you know, she's Native American and Mexican and she's doing something really cool. So they interviewed me and it was so last minute and I was kind of a fill in for someone else that had dropped out. So they kind of were looking for someone last minute and they were like, okay, we have to hurry up and interview you. And they ended up liking me. So I said, all right, let's go ahead and put you through the application process and we'll give you about three days and we'll let you know if you made it the show. So three days later, I said, um, they called me. They said, hey, you made the cut. We're going to go ahead and fly you out to um, to start filming. I go, okay, when do I leave? And they said, you leave in four days. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so I had about four days to prepare myself to be away for possibly a month. And I thought to myself, well, there's no way I'm going to make it past week two on this show. You know, I, I, I just had... I just didn't think I was going to go that far and I, you know, made it all the way through. So yeah, I was quite yeah, proud yeah. of myself. <laughs> that, that's so exciting. Hey, tell us a little about Gordon Ramsay. He, he's so, he, he's on fire on Hale's Kitchen, that's for sure. So tell us about him. He's honestly such an amazing person. Like he's everything that you think he is and more. Yes, he's tough. He's gritty and He's kind of in your face and he'll keep it, you know, real 100 with you and he doesn't hold anything back. And so that I do admire that about him, but he does care. He definitely cares. And I think this is one of those shows that really brought out that nurturing side of him um, to the public. And everyone's used to seeing him a certain way. But this particular competition, he was mentoring 
us to be the winner of this show. And so he was trying to bring out the best qualities of ourselves, not just as human beings, but as chefs. And so you, we got to experience this different side of Gordon Ramsay that was very nurturing. And he's a really awesome guy and he does care. He really, really cares about, you know, he's invested into who the winner is. And he's like really invested into making us better chefs while he's in our presence. And so he's an awesome, awesome guy, but he definitely is intense. He's a little frightening. And um, <laughs> I got, I got a little, you know, shell shook when I first saw him and I was like, Oh my gosh, he's actually in here, like teaching me something. And it's actually really, really cool. Could be intimidating. Yes. Yes. Now he loved your fry bread. I remember that. Yeah, he did that, you know, and that was honestly, and I said it on the show, I was like, that was the most beautiful fry bread I've ever seen in my life. Because, <laughs> you know, when we're at home, we're just making it, rolling it out, cutting it's all different sizes and shapes and it's got lumps and bumps and stuff. And so I was like, this has to be the best fry bread. So when I was rolling it out, I made every, made sure it was like the same thickness all the way through. I even used a little like cutter to make perfectly round circles and it was just phenomenal. And yeah, he really liked that fry bread. Yes, he did, and and, and I, I really appreciated him saying that the way he said it because, you know, here again promoting indigenous foods and, uh, it was, yes, hey, hey, tell us about that lamb. That lamb looked really delicious. You made the other night. Oh my goodness! You know, I was really, you know, as a chef because we spend so much time in in a kitchen and sometimes we're like, you know, kind of flying at the seat of our pants but we are just able to do so much in such a short amount of time and I was thinking about you know the proteins that were on that last drop and I was like you know I, I don't want to just do a, a sear of steak you know sear of filet I want to do something like you know amazing this is the finale and I had in my mind I really wanted to cook a rack of lamb and so um, when I saw it on the platform I was like okay well I have 28 minutes this is going to be the worst dish of my life or the best dish of my life and so <laughs> I just really had to stay confident and focused. And I think that was the most focused I'd ever been in the kitchen. And the amount of work that you can do in 28 min minutes is actually pretty, like you can do a lot. And so that lamb was perfect. And I wish I had maybe like that one or two more minutes on my time frame to be able to let it set and like rest. But at the end of the day, it's what won me the show. And I'm so incredibly proud of it. You should be. You should be. And let, let me backtrack just a little bit. Was that your recipe for fried bread or your grandma's? So it. So this is the thing. My grandmother did teach me how to make fried bread. Okay. And she taught me to use, you know, you can use warm water or warm milk. And so we had warm milk and we had warm buttermilk. And so in that in that um, that dish that I made with the fry bread, I actually made two versions of fry bread just in case. I was like, there's no way I can mess this up, but I'm going to use one with the warm milk and one with warm buttermilk. And oh. so the, the recipe that I ended up using is, you know, it basically is my grandmother's uh, using the milk or the buttermilk. It was just a substitute. But, um, you know, I had to do it from memory because there's no you can't take recipes in the kitchen with you. And so I was thinking, oh, I hope I put enough baking powder in this. that It rises. And so I made sure I made two batches just in case. But both batches turned out perfect. And I was like, man, that muscle memory, you know, once you're making fry bread your whole <laughs> life, like it, it sticks. And I'm usually I'm using a measuring spoon. But this time I was like, you know, I just have to do it from muscle memory. And it worked out. But, you know, my grandmother, I definitely give her the credit for that. Well, that's great. And hey, tell us this: was it the was it the buttermilk? I've never heard of the buttermilk. Was that was that the one that was really delicious? Yeah, they were both delicious. But the buttermilk <laughs> is the one that I ended up using because I I think I made it first, and so it was rising a lot quicker than the other one was. But they both turned out great. Well, for all those indigenous ladies out there right now watching, they can try buttermilk in their fry bread the next time they make it. Yeah, it, they it can. It might be the best uh, fry bread on Powell Trail this year, so we'll see. Maybe. But by, thank you very much. This is, uh, we'll, we'll conclude now, but I, I really do appreciate you coming on. And you are a hit with our Native News Online readers, so congrats, congratulations again. Thank you so much, Levi. It was such an honor. You have a good one. You as well. Thank you.